Uh, Rob Shadowin is back again. He is a state representative, a Republican from Ruston. Hey, Mr. Rob, how are you today? Robert, I am good. How are you all this morning? Well, we had, you know, the special session kicks off today, and we had Rep. Doty Horton on yesterday. And the headline from the story at keelnews.com is, Horton on new taxes, I pray that we hold the line. What is Rob Shadowin praying for? That we'll quit calling these special sessions because they're not so special anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they become quite ordinary. I am, what I'm really praying for is that there will be a spirit of new um, communications and negotiations. We've, we've been very polarized uh, in the legislature. And, and I'm hoping now that we've been through these drills several times that people who disagree with one another can sit down and, and actually talk with each other and say, no, nah, let's seek solutions instead of finding fault. Mr. That, Rob, that would I, be my prayer. Pardon me. I had seen I had seen your your social media post over the weekend. I think it was. And and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed what I took from that was you feel like am, am I wrong to say you're coming down on the governor's side on this stuff? Yeah, um, I. I will support the governor when I feel like he is right, uh, especially for people of Lincoln and Union parishes. And I don't always come down on either side. What I'm trying to do, Robert, is that I'm tired of the trite rhetoric over and over again that because John Bell is a Democrat, he can't have any ideas, and because the Republicans are, are trying to hold the line that they're being obstructionist. Somewhere in the middle is the truth, Robert. Rob, Rob, let me ask you, Robert, I'm sorry. Let hey, me Aaron, ask good morning. morning. Let me ask you this. Two years ago, you and, yeah. and, and your fellow Republicans came to me. You promised me these are going to be temporary taxes and we're going to do some restructuring and we're going to fix this mess. And by the time these taxes go off the books, July 1, 2018, two years has gone by. We still haven't got there. What what have they all been doing? I know there have been efforts and they've been defeated, but now I'm yes, now I'm frustrated and I'm not alone in that. No, you're not. And I share your frustration because I've been there in the middle of it. You know, going back to the Committee of 100 in 2015 and the HCR, the House Concurrent Resolution Number 11 in 2016 that was passed by John Schroeder, now a treasurer, you know, they gave us a roadmap for some suggestions that we need to do to get out of this ridiculous cycle that we've been in year after year after year. So I took some bills. In fact, I had a package of bills that would have lowered taxes on 91% of the people in Louisiana. Now, that means it would have raised taxes on about 9%, but only if you were making $500,000 or more. Now, I thought that was a good Republican sound idea. It was defeated in a Republican-dominated Ways and Means Committee and one of my Republican colleagues followed me out and said, the reason I voted to kill it is because when John Bell Edwards came out in favor of it, I knew I had to be against it because anything he's for, I'm against. That's the kind of mentality that's got us in this ditch now. Speaking, and I speak don't agree with that, and I'm not going to participate in that kind of thinking. Speaking of the governor, speaking of Mr. Edwards, yes, Governor Edwards, should he have signed? Yes, should he have signed the budget on Friday that he vetoed? Oh, gosh, Robert. I'm not very good at being a Monday morning quarterback, but both versions of House Bill 1, whether it was the House version or the Senate ver version, they were so untenable and unnecessary and ill-advised, I, I don't know what he would have done. I just know that what some of my Republican colleagues thought, and I, did, I thought there was some validity to this, is that the Senate identified if we want to restore the 24.2% cuts we made, we need, what was the number? Three hundred and thirteen million dollars. I mean, I get if we want to restore funding to the previous year's level, we will need three hundred and twenty nine million. And that gets us up to the six hundred and forty three million. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I thought my... that was kind of a good blueprint for us to go by in a pecking order and say, OK, if we're going to replace some revenue, here's the priority. I guess my point was that that you had mentioned a couple of times we need to stop the obstructionists need to stop obstructing. And yet we've had a lot of folks on specifically this morning who have said that 
by not signing the bill on Friday by vetoing the budget that John Bell was purposefully being obstructionist. Do you agree or disagree? Oh, Robert, I, I think the obstructionist tag is enough to go around uh, to everybody. I don't think he's purposefully being an obstructionist. We, we've known this has been coming for a long, long time. And he also told us that uh, in his opening address back in February that any budget that would incorporate the $648 million in cuts would be so nasty that he had, and to use his words, no fear of this becoming law. So we we weren't surprised that he vetoed it. He had told us in so many words that he would do. Rob, are you confident that we have sufficient, as a conservative, that we have yeah. cut this budget as much as we possibly can? I, I heard Jay Darden use the figure of $9.6 billion general fund less than a week ago. That's the biggest ever. That bothers me. Aaron, it, it bothers everybody uh, right now. Uh, the 9.6 would include if we if we just decided we wanted to stand still, um, and when we stand still, you know, we're not gaining anything. In fact, I sometimes question whether in Louisiana we in the House or we in the legislature want to do something about where we are in our rankings across. The, the 9.6, to get back to your question, I'm sorry, I'm rambling this morning, is with the $648 million. Right now, what the House and Senate passed in the regular session was more like $8.9 billion. Am I convinced that we've cut everything we can cut? Uh, pretty much after eight years of Governor Jindal and two years of Republican-dominated uh, control of the House and Senate, yeah, if there were any other cuts, I think they would have already identified them, and they can't. This is a pretty heady task for 10 working days, 14 total days. Uh, and it's yeah. almost like with the governor's veto of the budget, it literally, it, it's it's almost like starting from scratch. Do you have the time? How confident are you that any problems at all can be solved? And what if at the end of 10 days or 14 days, whatever it turns out to be, uh, if, if, if the problems aren't fixed, what happens then? I'm sorry, my knees just buckled on that question, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Let me sit down a minute and get over the shake. Okay? Take a deep breath, cough twice, we'll be fine. Oh, Woo-hoo! Boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about this because I don't know realistically if, if the past is any key to the present. I would not lay odds on, the, on solving this in 10 days, even though I don't think we have to start over from scratch. I think it would be really good to go back and see how we ended up on House Bill 1, decide how much revenue we're going to plug in, if any, because even excuse me, the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, Cameron Henry, and the chairman of the Republican delegation in Baton Rouge, Lance Harris, have both acknowledged, now we know what we have, this is a responsible budget, and we now know how much revenue we need to raise. Even the ones that have been saying we don't have a revenue problem, we got a spending problem, have come around to saying we've got to have some to plug in the hole. One more quick question, All Mr. Right. Rob. It, it, a constitutional yeah. convention, what do you think? Oh, that's a cop-out, Robert, because we have neglected and not done our job as the people's representatives because we've had each and every bill that could have solved this fiscal crisis over the last two years, and we have failed to act each and every time. So you the agree. constitutional convention is simply legislative leisure domain. Look over here because we're not doing a doggone thing over here where we should be. So you agree the, with, go ahead, Aaron. The governor's fault or lawmaker's fault? Where would you put the most blame? Uh, I would put the most blame on the House of Representatives. Really? For being stubborn? Yep. No, for being fugitives from the facts. You know, uh, I know I've been called a rhino and not a team player, but I, I told one of my Republican colleagues, I'm sorry, I thought rhino stood for Republican ignoring needed options. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we continue to do. You know, they, they get reports, they don't like the results, then they ignore them. And maybe this is going to change. We're going to bet on the come. We're going to kick that can and bet it's going to get better. 
that's no way to run a state and it's no way to run a business.